Yo guys, what's up everyone? Crypto Henry here. And have you ever wondered what are the differences between, for example, Aave, Compound, these DeFi lending protocols, and MakerDAO? You know, MakerDAO is not really a lending protocol. It's more a collateralized debt position. What's mouthful is this collateralized debt position? And in this video, I'm going to show you the exact differences between DeFi lending protocol like Aave and compounds and a CDP like MakerDAO. They are really, really different. The mechanism behind it is really different, but I understand the confusion because from the user perspective, it's actually quite similar. And I had a question from one of, the, of my students and basically he asked, collateralized depositions is no different from any lending protocol you have talked about. I can't tell the difference is from regular lending. And I totally understand the question because indeed, from a user perspective, it's very similar, but what's happening behind the scenes, it's quite different. All right, so without further ado, let's get straight into it. The differences between lending and CDPs. And I'm going to start by showing you some slides to illustrate what exactly is a DeFi lending protocol and what exactly is a CDP. And after that, I'm going to uh, have a tutorial and I'm going to show you exactly how uh, to use these uh, tools. All right. And in this case, I'm going to show you Aave and Compound because these are the two biggest uh, DeFi lending protocols and uh, they are battle tested and very solid and they have a multi-billion dollar TVL total value locked. But how do they work? Okay, let's say we have a borrower and we have a lender. Sometimes we also call the lender a liquidity provider. And let's say the borrower, uh, the person has some uh, crypto uh, but doesn't want to sell the crypto and he wants to buy a boat in this case. And the lender that we have here, Alice, let's say our borrower is Bob and our lender is Alice. And Alice has some, some cash and she wants to have a better yield for her savings. So how can they meet their needs? Well, they can come to a DeFi lending protocol like Aave or Compound. And what's going to happen is that Alice, the lender or liquidity provider, is going to deposit USDC. In this case, she is going to deposit a stablecoin. Could be another asset, but she is going to deposit in this case USDC stablecoin. And then the borrower, Bob, is going to deposit Bitcoin as a collateral. And he wants to get a loan, right? But he doesn't want to sell his Bitcoin. And after that, he can obtain a USDC loan. And then some point in time, he will repay the loan plus interest. And Alice, whenever she wants, she can also withdraw her uh, USDC. And once Bob uh, repaid the loan, he can receive the collateral back. Um, and it's all good. And this is basically how the defi lending protocol works. By the way, this here, the defi lending protocol, either Aave, Compound and so on, this is not a peer-to-peer -peer lending. So Alice is not lending directly to Bob. It's lending to a pool. And you have many, many people depositing into this pool. Okay, many people depositing different amounts of USDC. And you have many people getting uh, loans and depositing collaterals. And this is how the risk is spread. So probably, as you know by now, uh, also the borrower, Bob in this case, he will have to have a collateral that is worth more than uh, whatever he is getting as a loan. So you will deposit, let's say, one Bitcoin worth of $100,000. I know I know that Bitcoin at the moment is not $100,000, but let's say for the sake of the example, he deposits $100,000 worth of Bitcoin to get a $75,000 loan. And this is the way the loan is secured. Let's say a few days later, the Bitcoin price dropped to $76,000. So it's almost barely covering uh, the loan that he got. If he doesn't deposit more collateral, the smart contract behind the DeFi protocol will automate the liquidation of this loan. So in this example, Bob is going to fail to add more collateral, meaning that the DeFi protocol, the smart contract, will be forced to liquidate, to sell the collateral. And uh, this is going to be basically sold to 
people, market agents, at a small discount in order to make sure that the loan is repaid and make sure that the funds and interest of Alice and all the other uh, lenders and liquidity providers are safe. So this is in a nutshell how DeFi lending protocol works. Everything is automated by smart contracts. And basically you have two sides of the deal. You have a lender and a borrower. You have someone that provides liquidity and someone that takes liquidity. And the borrower provides a collateral and gets a loan. And this loan is comes from uh, the liquidity providers, from the lenders, right? So we have two parts of the deal. Now, CDPs, collateralized debt positions are slightly different. You only have, let's say, one side of the deal, but don't worry, I'm going to show you how it works. So from the user perspective, again, it's very similar if you are the borrower from the borrower perspective. Let's say in this case now, Alice wants to buy a boat and she doesn't want to sell her ETH because she believes that ETH price may go up in the future and it's a good investment. So she doesn't want to sell her ETH in order to buy the boat. Instead, she wants to get a loan. So she could go also to Ave or Compound, but in this case, she is going to MakerDAO. MakerDAO is a CDP protocol, and she is going to deposit one ETH, and let's say for the sake of the example, one ETH is worth $10,000 to open a CDP, a collateralized debt position. And MakerDAO now is going to mint 6,666 DAI. DAI is a MakerDAO stablecoin. And uh, you have this ratio because we have 150% collateral. So all good. Once one day Alice wants to get her ease back, she can't pay back the um, die and the protocol will burn this amount of die and she will get the one ease back return. So it's all good. It also works with liquidations. It's very similar in this case to uh, the lending uh, protocols. So let's say she deposited this one ETH, right? And let's say one ETH goes below a certain threshold. Her collateral will be also liquidated. Uh, and this is automated by smart contracts. So let's say she doesn't add more collateral. It's going to be auctioned. Someone is going to buy the collateral, a market agent, and she receives at the end the remaining uh, of the collateral. Let's say, for example, in this case, she deposited one is uh, worth of $10,000. If it goes below $7,000, the price of is it will be liquidated to cover the 6,666,000 uh, die. And there is a, a, a difference, a small uh, remaining that she is going to receive back. Okay. So basically, this is how it works. And this is the main difference. As you can see here in this diagram, Alice is dealing directly with MakerDAO. And what MakerDAO in this case is doing is minting, creating new DAI stablecoin that is backed by ETH in this case. MakerDAO is not giving Alice the stablecoins of someone else, someone that provided liquidity. Instead, MakerDAO is minting, is creating new DAI to give it to Alice. And this DAI is backed by a real asset that she is depositing. So there is this mint burn mechanism right here. Uh, in this case, she is minting. In this case, she is burning to get the ETH returned. And she is getting newly minted DAI. While when we use a lending protocol like Ave and Compound. Ave and Compound are not minting new stable coins. When you the, the borrower, when you get a loan, you get the stable coins of someone else that provided the liquidity, right? Someone else provided liquidity here. We have a lender and we have a borrower, while on MakerDAO there is no uh, borrower and lender. Let's say there is only borrower side. All right, where should you go if you want to interact with these protocols? Let's start with the MakerDAO website. So you can go to MakerDAO.com, click Use DAI, and you will be forwarded to the Oasis app, which is basically the front end to interact with MakerDAO uh, smart contracts. So you can click here, Borrow. Let me zoom in a little bit. Awesome. And you can choose the assets that you want to borrow against. So let's say I want to select here ETH because I have some ETH on my wallet. I can click here, borrow. 
And now I will be able to provide an amount of ETH to generate DAI. Now, let's say I don't have at the moment 20 ETH, but if I have, I could put here 20 and I want to get, let's say, $8,000 a DAI loan. And as you can see here, we have a collateral of 20 ETH. Collateralization ratio is 333%. So I have 333% collateral of whatever I'm generating in DAI. But the most important thing here is the liquidation price, $680. So if ETH goes below $680, MakerDAO smart contract will automatically uh, auction my collateral in order to cover the DAI that I have borrowed, okay? On MakerDAO, there are other things that you need to pay attention to. One of them is a stability fee. This is basically the rate, the interest rate that you pay uh, to MakerDAO, 0.5% annually. In this case, it's quite low. But you have this liquidation fee, which is kind of a penalty for being liquidated. And again, in this case, on Oasis MakerDAO, you are basically interacting with uh, MakerDAO directly. They are minting these, these new DAI for you. They are generating new DAI. While on Aave and Compound, you are getting uh, the, the liquidity from someone else that is providing li the liquidity. So let's take a quick look at Aave. Aave, in this case, um, I can here uh, supply an asset. In this case, it's showing ETH because I have a little bit of ETH on my wallet. I could also supply this without getting a loan, right? I can just provide the liquidity and I can provide this ETH and I will receive an APY in this case of 1%. Not much, but it's honest work. So I could click here, supply and provide my ETH. Uh, pay the gas fees. I'm not now going to go ahead to avoid paying the gas fees, but you could provide this. And basically after that, you can borrow any of these assets. You have stable coins, you have different kinds of tokens. You have um, a big range of tokens to select from here. The same thing with compound. Compound, you can supply different kinds of tokens as a collateral. In this case, I would supply um, Ether, right? And they are paying only 0.19%. I could just supply to get the APY or I can supply and enable it as a collateral and then I could borrow any of these stable coins here. And again, the main difference here is that on Aave and Compound, someone else is supplying whatever you are borrowing while on MakerDAO, the protocol itself is minting new DAI to lend it to you. All right, if you found this explanation useful, give it a like and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you tomorrow.